be able to share with them. So, good. Right, let me share the slide so that we can start. Right. Uh, last month we we started uh, this session uh, about uh, uh, farming your children, and uh, this is what we did in the month of uh, of February. And uh, I'm not going to go back into the whole uh, slides or, or what we learned last time, but just to refresh our mind, what we learned last uh, last uh, on, on, in the month of February, we're going to look at uh, obvious. We did the introduction of what is uh, affirmation, and obviously uh, the objective of the session, uh, as you can see on the picture uh, on your right side, is that uh, we the reason for affirmation is so that we can be able to raise up children who can boldly say, "I am loved, I am happy, I am confident, I am handsome, or I'm beautiful, I believe in myself, I care about others." I can do amazing things. So uh, this is just a snapshot of what we are trying to develop in the life of our children through affirmation. And we looked at that. Uh, and also we looked scripturally that even the Father, God, the, uh, uh, our, our Father, uh, he affirmed Jesus Christ as his son. And uh, we found that in the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, which, where the scripture says, when he was he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Then in the same book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 5, the Bible says that while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the crowd saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased." So uh, we see that the model father or the, you know, Jesus, God himself, God the father is modeling to us uh, the importance of affirmation that uh, uh, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, he affirmed him not once, but uh, quite a number of times when he spoke about uh, him being his beloved son. And uh, let me share this briefly. Uh, most of you, obviously, maybe have been in uh, uh, in a revival house, or we have seen some of the program that we do through the same bridges. And when one of the things that inspired us to start the same bridges program is this part of affirmation. And we, uh, you can remember very well that anytime we have these sessions every year we have what we call affirmation ceremony. And this affirmation ceremony is when the, the parents take the opportunity to affirm their children publicly and declare to them, uh, uh, declare to the public uh, their love for their children and also recognizing them that they are, they are no longer children, uh, but they have grown up to, they, you know, they are, they are, they'll be treated as, uh, as, as grown up children. And, I've shared this before. One day I asked one of my son, which is the most memorable moment in your life? Uh, uh, obvious, he mentioned many, but he highlighted that the day we affirmed him publicly uh, was the most uh, memorable day. And, uh, and I can attest that to both of my sons who have gone through the St. Bridges program, they have told me that that was the most memorable day in their lives. When we publicly announce them uh, uh, that uh, that you have become, you're no longer boys, but we will, will acknowledge you as men. And when we shared our love uh, openly to the public. Some of these things, uh, it may look like just another thing that you can do anywhere. But I remember when the God gave me this revelation about the power of affirmation, it really changed so many things. Uh, and I've seen even the life of many children being changed. I remember the first cohort, the first group that was a family in our church. Uh, I can attest to uh, to that, that most of them, when they went back to their school, they ended up becoming uh, some, you know, almost 95% of them 
uh, ended up becoming like uh, leaders in their in their school, school prefects, uh, uh, team leaders, and you can see the difference even in their education performance. So, affirmation is not just another thing. It's not just another day that we gather people to uh, uh, to you know to just celebrate the, the the right of passage for the children, but in actual fact that ceremony when uh, when we publicly uh, affirm our children it has a a huge uh, uh, you know uh, uh, transformation in them and it has a deep spiritual meaning that we cannot be able to uh, uh, that cannot be taken lightly so for those parents maybe who are here and maybe your children have never been affirmed uh, I, I, I will request and I will kindly uh, advise you uh, uh, make uh, make sure you do it. Maybe you may not see the result uh, uh, now, but in some years to come, you reflect back, and even the, where you know the, your children will one day tell you that that was the most important thing that they you, you ever did. When you see the result, some of the result that we see may not be immediate, but uh, by and by you shall see the result. So that's what we learned last uh, in the month of February about the affirmation. And we looked at some ways where we can be able to affirm our children. And we see that uh, God the Father spoke publicly uh, about the Son twice in the Gospel of Matthew, both times uh, it was to affirm him. So if the perfect Son of God received words of affirmation from his Father, how much more do our imperfect kids need affirmation from their parents? So it is something that we, we learn. The Bible says that all these things were written for admonition. So we run from the scriptures, we run from our father, and we as parents, we do the same as our father in heaven did when he was affirming his son. Right. So uh, we look at some other scripture, the importance of affirmation. That's what we looked last time. And we say uh, that parenting is not just about teaching children what they can do and cannot do. It's our job to go beyond the do's and don'ts to help our children to see themselves the way God see them, like a treasured possession. So prison words are like honeycomb, sweetness to the soul, and health to the bone. So we affirmation uh, is important. Right. So we looked at, let me look at the last slide before we, we, we go to the business of the day. And we looked at the, the, the three Bs of affirmation. Uh, we say that number one, when you are affirming your child, be intentional. Number two, be authentic. And number three, be unique. And then uh, the deities of affirmation, it means that we, we need to, to talk. That means we need to create time to talk to your children. Also, we need time with our children. And also, we need that touch. Uh, when I say that touch, that hugging your children, uh, uh, affirming them in different ways, it is the important uh, thing that we should do to our children, right? So let's, uh, uh, okay, uh, this is the last part of the affirmation that we did. Uh, we, we, uh, some of the word that you can use for our children. Uh, and this should not be done once a month or once a year. This is a word that you keep on, uh, you know, you need to marinate our children with this word. I believe in you. Sometimes they may fail you, Sometimes they may not be able, they are not maybe uh, doing the, the very thing that you want them to do. But sometimes also even when they are failing in, in a certain subject or in a certain uh, area, you can tell them, I, uh, you know, I know you have, you have not done your best this time, but I believe in you. I believe that you can do it. And that's why I'm pushing you. So you can rebuke and at the same time uh, have that affirmation whereby I am pushing you because I know you can which is uh, uh, not the same way like telling somebody, I don't know who you, you know, who, you know, who, who you, you know, uh, you know, why you behave the way you behave. I don't know why you behave so stupid. I don't know why, uh, uh, I don't think you can make it. I, I, you know, I think you are just a troublesome kid. All those words, yes, you may vent your anger, but they have a huge uh, negative impact in the future and, uh, you know, in the life of your daughter or your son, uh, especially because some of the words that you have spoken, especially when you're angry, uh, you may not be able to retrieve them 
once uh, the, uh, you know you know once the day is over and maybe you have come down the word that you used was so uh, damaging that uh, is affecting not only their their now but also their future so we need to have the, those words i believe in you you uh, if you see them doing you know even small things like being kind to their brothers or to their sisters or to their friends uh, you know use those words you have such a big heart uh, other things you, you have a, a no some sense of humor if uh, sometimes your children can you know most of them most of the time maybe they maybe you can hear them cracking jokes with their friends uh, you know using those words i like how you your mind works uh, i love the, the, that you never give up you make me happy even when they ask questions ask tell them that's a great question tell them you are you are so brave all these things uh will go a long way and, and these are words that we can use to affirm our children yes that was what we covered but i just needed to refresh uh, our mind what we learned last time and today we, uh, we are going to look at uh, two areas it's still in the area of affirmation but we have to look at some of the negative things that we can do though we have done so well maybe in the, in the in the beginning uh, in in the uh, you know of your family or maybe at some point you are doing these things but sometimes maybe an issue or something can crop up in your marriage which somehow the great work that you did in the beginning you can do it you can un undo it or maybe you can destroy what you have done by some of the things that maybe I've seen, uh, especially uh, uh, in the Western world, uh, that has, uh, you know, has been of huge uh, detriment to the growth of our children. And we're going to look at that a few points, and then we still, uh, you know, uh, we are going to continue with this area of affirmation, right? And this is uh, this is when when parents turn their children into weapons, everyone loses. You may ask me, Pastor, you just come from affirmation and now you, you, you've you gone to, to this area. I want us to address this because uh, I can teach or we can learn about affirmation, but then we can destroy it because of maybe at some point in your life, maybe there's an issue with your marriage uh, and maybe that thing cropped up maybe 10 years down, down the line of your marriage. And unfortunately, maybe that's what you did or the great effort that you did raising up these children, you can destroy it by uh, uh, by this. And I I want us to look at this without being uh, you know biased in in any way, because uh, this can not only this does not only happen to uh, men uh, or you know I, I've seen both cases. I've, you know where this I've seen men trying to use their their their, their children against their mother. Their children, uh, their children to turn against their mother, and also their mothers, uh, the mothers also using the children uh, to turn against their dad. So we are going to look at that because affirmation is important. But the good work that you have done for many months or for many years can be destroyed, especially when you don't understand this. And I'm believing that maybe most of the people that I'm speaking to tonight are people who are of Christian faith, and uh, you know, obvious maybe. People may have different reasons uh, to say, Pastor, maybe I don't have a choice but to do what I am doing. But I want us to understand actually uh, that we, when we know the repercussion, and not only the now repercussion, but the future repercussion, uh, then we should be careful how we handle this matter. Then number two, we understand actually that we are just custodian. As much as we call them our children, we are just but stewards, and stewards are supposed to do what the masters expect them to do. So in this case, our master is God, and then he has this expectation when you are raising these children. And as long as our conscience is clear before God and man, that whatever thing that we do when we are raising up these children, we know that our conscience is clear before God, number one, and then before man, then you can take any other decision that you, you you know you want to take, but be sure assured that uh, whatever we do, as fathers or even as mothers, that all these things will be uh, you know at some point, good or bad, it will appear 
in the life of our children. So let's look at this. Uh, uh, what is weaponization of children against the, the, the parents? And um, I, I decided, let me just put some notes, more notes here. Obviously, this is unusual when you are doing slides. Obviously, you expect us to put uh, maybe, uh, obviously, the best way to do it is just have some few uh, uh, writings. But because I want us, all of us to learn, and if you are taking screenshot, you can be able to take this screenshot. Uh, that's why uh, I, sometimes you find me roading more information on these slides because it's not more just presentation, but I want you to have something to take home, to, some, something that you can be able to uh, reference in future. And we see in this case, we have written uh, what parents, uh, when parents turn the, the children into weapons, everyone loses. Let's look at this. So domestic abuse can involve one parent using a child as a weapon against the other parent, which has, in, uh, you know, in future has a, you know, has a, it will affect them. And obviously research have shown that these dynamics play out a significant damage. For example, mothers and fathers uh, use children to manipulate and harm the other parent. This behavior can include uh, uh, pressurizing the child to spy on the abused parent or threatening the abused parent that they will never, uh, uh, you know, they will not be be included directly uh, when you know raising these children, and threat, this just but few of the threats that can be used. And another way parents can use a child as a weapon is involving uh, is it involves turning the child against the other parents, and uh, where the abuser makes the child believe that the other parents never loved them, uh, that they abandoned them or is uh, dangerous to be allowed. In this way, the abuser corrupt the child's reality, even convincing the child that the, uh, the abuse victim, uh, you know, the other uh, person uh, obvious does not love them or does not care. But we have to ask ourselves, what is the psychological effect on the life of this child? Because remember, the child will be with you. Uh, let's say, obvious nowadays, especially in the Western world, the children tend to stay in our, uh, under our roof, maybe to the age of 20s, sometimes even uh, uh, more than that. But in actual fact, when the children go to uni, uh, most of them tend not to go, come back, to stay with you like day to day. Most of them maybe find themselves, they, they have their own, they have moved out from your home and they have started living by themselves. Some of, some of them, maybe at the age of, uh, in their late 20s, they get married and obviously they will not be with you. We have to ask ourselves, whatever we are doing, how long? Uh, and if we know the repercussion, how will it affect our children? So the outcome of this process is what psychologists call parental alienation. This child feels betrayed, hurt, and very angry toward the alienated uh, parent. Much like a span lover, but worse, because it involves parents, the child had a primary attachment to and who pro compromises of the identity. So what happened next was what you can call a cascade of roses associated with great harm to children. So let's look at some of the negative things that happened. We are still looking at the area of affirming our children, but one, something like this can affect the, the future of this child for the rest of their life. Let's look at some of the things that maybe uh, affect uh, some of the, the challenges that these children may, the consequences of parental alienation. So when one parent separates the child emotionally uh, from the other parent, great harm ensues. And one of these is loss of self-confidence. You may ask me, Pastor, what do you mean by this? Remember, when you talk about self-confidence, it's not only uh, during the time when they are young. Uh, it is also uh, when they grow up. And when somebody is in low self-confidence, it means that actually uh, it will also affect not only maybe in their future career or in your future inter interaction, but if they get married or, or, or they marry, that means that at some point in their life, even the choice 
all their future spouse can be compromised because of confidence. And maybe they may end up finding themselves being bullied or not being able to arise to, to the position that God intended them. Why? Because uh, when somebody is suffering from uh, loss of self-confidence, it affects so, so many ways. Even some, some of the careers they, they, or maybe position that uh, they would have uh, you know, scaled and to, uh, you know, to, uh, scaled to higher heights. Yes, they could have scaled to that, but because of self confidence. So, we understand actually we may we may have uh, immediate we may have resort temporary resort that maybe fulfill how we feel. Maybe we are men who are alienating our children from their mothers, or the mothers alienating their children from their fathers. They are, you you may win for now, but maybe you still have time in future, you may find yourself now, you are nursing the problem of a failed marriage of your daughter or the failed marriage of your son. Not because God intended them to be like that or not because uh, uh, they were supposed to be like that or maybe their spouses are, are, are wrong and, or, or are not the, the right people, but because something uh, was lost when during their upbringing. So lots of self-confidence and, uh, you know, goes a long way. When we talk about the second point is loss of innocence. Uh, we can say that the abusive parent can take away the child's innocence, obviously by exposing them to ideas and behaviors that are not age appropriate. Uh, uh, and Or even maybe you can, uh, you know, sometimes the parents can push the children to make decisions that are, you know, that are, that are not age appropriate. Like now maybe telling them, okay, it is you to choose whether it is me uh, or your mother or to choose me, whether it choose me or, or your dad. Maybe you're telling a child who is maybe in their teens or maybe even younger than that. Uh, you put them in a predicament. They have never seen something like this. You are the, the person that they trust most, but yet you have pushed them to make that decision. Yes, they may say yes to you. We will not go to my mom or we will not go to my dad. Or will not do this and this. Uh, you have won, uh, but it's a temporal uh, uh, win, because at some point, uh, one what has happened with the life of that child is that they have lost their innocence, and uh, sometimes you are pressuring them to do it, and uh, it has a mentally it may affect them in future. And I'm just saying this. Uh, obviously, maybe there the are cases whereby, obvious. Uh, in need, uh, you know, an intervention. But I'm looking at now from where, remember what I said in the beginning, searching your heart. If in the eyes of God, what you are doing, is it to punish or is this surely, surely you really need to do what you are, you, you are doing? So loss of innocence uh, 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 can be, you know, is, you know, is obvious uh, one of the consequences. Uh, that comes with that. Then number uh, three, loss of parental connection. We know that it is a desire when you are raising children that both of their parents uh, uh, are involved, uh, but it's not always the case. But especially when you have an opportunity whereby the, 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 the father or the mother, uh, you know, they have an opportunity to be in the, in the, the life of that child. We have to be careful because when that parental connection is 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 taken away. Yes, in the meantime, when you have you are with them, it looks okay. But in future, when they them themselves become becomes parents, there's an area in their life where they may struggle to connect even with their children. So we have to be careful. Then the other point number four is that there's what you call loss of wider family links. For example, they have their cousin from your spouse's side. Uh, maybe even the school, uh, you know, when you approve them from this uh, social networks uh, uh, or, or these links, it has a future, you know, it has a huge impact on the life of these children. Maybe they'll not be able to tell you uh, because sometimes they may not be able to express themselves. But we, it is us, our duty as parents to realize actually, I will do the best I can for the future of this child and to make sure that, uh, that, uh, you know, I don't become that parent who alienate the other uh, because of maybe some disagreement that we've had. So this is a very, very important thing that we need to address. And especially I'm speaking from a Christian perspective, 
that we need to be uh, uh, cautious because anything that we do without knowing the, the future consequences, we may do it uh, abruptly, we may do it out of the emotions or, or the heat of the moment, only to find actually that the, the problem that you, you are trying to create or to try to solve, uh, it will never leave you. And especially right now, it will be hard because there will be nobody to blame in future, especially when your son or your daughter uh, has a problem, maybe even keeping a job, uh, keeping a marriage or keeping a relationship, or even the attitude of that child maybe changes and maybe there's, uh, there's something that maybe you would have done. I always advise, do the best you can and trust God to do, you know, number one, trust God but do the best you can that in future you shall you will not have regret you say that why i wish i did not do what i did do the best that you can and remember that god will always vindicate you and the other one is the loss of social connection when i say social connection here is something film uh, almost something similar to what i said in uh, point number 4 uh the family links social connection means that for example there's a disagreement uh, and then uh, that child is is no longer maybe communicating with the with the cousins, if your husband's uh, 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 family or your wife's family, all these things you may not. For you, it might be okay because you are grown up. You have seen quite a lot, but for the children, they are uh, unable to understand these things, and it uh, affects even their education, and and the, even their growth. Uh, especially psychological growth. Uh, psychologically, they are affected in so many ways. So we have to look at that. So let me not dwell in that, but I, I wanted to throw that in because we are dealing on how to raise a farm or children. Obviously, this topic we started, how we can be able to raise emotionally intelligent children. And we are looking at some of the things that we should, the do's and don'ts, so that we can be able to have a balanced, uh, uh, you know, a, a balanced upbringing of our children right so i want us to do something uh now that we have we are learning these things about affirming our children remember what i say that these children will not be with us forever we have a window with this uh, uh in the life of these children and this window um i, I can say that we we do the best that we can to raise them in the right way. I was reading a story uh, of a gentleman, uh, of a family that was, uh, you know, they raised so many wonderful men and women who served the government, the community. Most of them were pastors. And most of them uh, were successful people. Uh, it, it was a huge it, 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 a family, uh, a family tree that they did a research and they were they wanted to know, uh, especially the, the grandmother, uh, when was asked, "How comes your family tree is so successful?" There were many children. Uh, the grandmother had given birth to I think about twelve children, and obviously now looking at that family tree, looking it down, uh, there were many. I think we are talking about looking to over fifty uh, children uh, in that uh, family tree. And then uh, he was asked, how comes uh, you and your husband were able to raise this family, you know, these 12 children, they were all successful and their children also became successful. They, they could see the family tree was, you know, was amazing. And then he, he said some few things. He said that the obvious, the way he parented, uh, he was raising them up. Uh, uh, the, both of them, the husband and the wife, they were saying that they were very, very intentional in whatever they did. And I, I was looking at it, that, uh, if I asked myself, maybe maybe 30 years down the line or 40 years down the line if Jesus studied, and this is not only me, or if I have to ask you the same question. If somebody asks you, give me a, a blueprint uh, of how you raised your son or your daughter, would you say that maybe my daughter survived, uh, just survived my parenting, or you had an intentional way of raising them? Because sometimes it is until we are old and we reflect back and we realize that we say, well, I think 
I didn't know how I did it, but it worked. Or I didn't know how I did it, and and I think that's why my son or my daughter has failed. But I believe that when we are intentional in our parenting, just like that family was asked, how comes your most of your children are, you know, almost all your children have become successful? Is the especially the mother said, I was intentional. We are talking about this as a woman who raised the children in the twenties, uh, in the era where there was a lot that was going on. But she said that she was intentional in raising up uh, uh, her children. And I want us to ask ourselves, maybe, what are the, th maybe, I've tried to list some of the things that maybe in the life of, uh, you know, when you are raising up our children, some of the, I've mentioned maybe, I've put together maybe 26 things that we sh should tell our children before they leave our homes. And this is not in a one sitting. These are things that maybe are spread out during our uh, when we are raising them. Maybe it's, I believe some of them we do them, but I believe when we have a list, and I'm not saying this is the exhaustive list, when we have a list of the things that we want our children to to learn before they leave our homes, uh, I believe it will make us intentional, and I believe we'll be assured of great results. Let's look at some of this. So I've written down 26 things you want your children to know. And this uh, is bullet point. I will not necessarily explain all of them. But uh, every point uh, is not just uh, maybe just a point, but uh, everything has a meat on it. And one of the things that maybe I, I, I would like us uh, maybe to put in, into practice in the life of, you know, uh, we want to instill in our children as parents is that we need to let them know that God is always with you. And this is not just words. Uh, because there are so many things that will come in the life of your children. Maybe sometimes they will enter into competition where they are going to uh, not necessarily going to win. Maybe there's a, there'll be setbacks in their exams. Maybe there'll be setbacks in their friendship circles. Maybe there'll be, uh, you know, there'll be exams to be done. There'll be, you know, there'll be things that, you know, necessarily they will not be able to just do by themselves. But it is having planted that seed in the heart of that child from their young from their young age, knowing that, letting them know that God is with you. That even when they leave the nest, when they leave home, that these children will have this confidence that wherever I go, I've learned from my mommy, I've learned from my dad, that God is always with me. And when we are able to teach them and let them experience the goodness of God by themselves, then we know that we have planted the right seed in the life of these children. And sometimes maybe this is what I do with my my children. I like them I like them to write down their prayer request. What are we believing God for? Not only even for their personal things. For example, sometimes we, we are believing even as a family, we are believing to maybe to uh, uh, decorate the house. Or maybe we are believing to uh, buy something. This is where I begin to involve them. If we are to buy a car, what car would you like us to buy? Uh, and I tell them, I don't, I may not have the money. Can we believe together? Uh, can we write down as a family? Can we write down that this is what you are believing God for? Uh, can we believe, uh, uh, maybe for example, there's a member of the family who is not feeling well, or even member of the church, or even a, a family friends who is not who is going through some hard time? Can we write down the prayer point together? Can we commit him, or can we commit her, or can, can we commit that family together? And then when we see the result, all of us together, we celebrate as a family. Do you know what I've done? Intentionally, I'm, I'm involving them to understand that prayer works. When they hear that we prayed for such a such thing and God answered, we wrote it down together as a family. I, uh, you know, They begin to understand that God will always be with you. And sometimes things may not be the way they're supposed to, uh, may not go the way they're supposed to go. But can we also still be, can they also believe that even when things are not working, God is with us. God loves us. And that is one of the, one to the you, know, you know, being intentional in teaching these things and uh, not only ad hoc, doing it ad hoc, but being intentional, writing these prayers down together as family, uh, praying things together and letting your children, uh, your sons and daughters knowing that God is always with them, is with them. Uh, another thing that maybe, uh, not maybe actually, the, but the, 
we need to our children to know is that they need to know that they have never been anyone exactly like you. And this is still part of affirmation. Remember, uh, I highlight the most, you know, the unique uh, character uh, or the unique traits in them. Some of them maybe are very good in memory. Some of them are uh, good in uh, in in, uh, in cookery. Some of them are very organized. You know, there must be something good in the life of your child. And it is that intentionally telling them again and again, they have never been anyone exactly like you and highlight their uniqueness. You know what? Even when they are not with you, when they go out there, because the, the father or the mother told them the uniqueness in them, believe you me, even when they feel challenged or threatened, they will remember uh, uh, the uniqueness in them and they will begin to, uh, obvious, uh, uh, tend to navigate toward that, uh, their strong point, and it will help them not only when they are with you, but even when, especially when they are faced with uh, with challenges out there. Sometimes we may think that maybe what you are telling our children, they are not listening. And maybe sometimes you tell them, are you listening what I'm telling you? Sometimes even you don't need to force it to uh, for them to listen. But even what you think they are not listening, it goes a long way. The other one is that respect. It's about respect. We need to let our children know about respect. Uh, that, that you know, give respect, and respect, and expect it. Because maybe sometimes we always push our children to give respect uh, and, and 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 to show respect, but we don't also teach them to expect respect. That means that now, this is where boundaries comes in. Have you taught your daughter the boundaries? Uh, uh, have you taught them uh, your son the boundaries? Have you taught them about what is uh, uh, respect? Uh, if somebody respects your body. Uh, the thing that the, uh, that he or she is not supposed to do, all these things, respect, and uh, how to give respect, how to earn respect, and how to expect it. When I talk about this thing, remember what I say, they sound like a bullet point, but you can expand it. And this is not something that you teach overnight. It's something that now you are putting these points down, and you know that these are lessons that I am going to teach, or I'm going to instill in the life of my children. Because Yes, a pastor or a youth leader or a Sunday school teacher can teach, but when it's coming from the parent, it has, it, it goes, you know, it goes deep in the life of these children. And then number four is that we need to teach our children to choose their friend wisely and be a good friend. Choose your friend wisely and be a good friend. What is it to be a good friend? Not only to expect to be given, not only to expect to be treated well, but also always endeavoring to teach, you know, to do the same to others. This have to be, you know, taught from home. And um, uh, yes, we can always tell our children, uh, uh, choose your friends wisely. Uh, but at the end of the day, this also have to be, uh, you know, you have to be, you know, we have to practice it ourselves. So whatever we teach, it has to be practiced. So we must be hospitable. Yes, we, we are good friends. We must be hospitable to others. So are you hospitable? Uh, do you do you have friends coming to visit? Do you, uh, you know, entertain people in your family? Uh, are you a hospitable person? Because some of these things, as much as we teach, most of the things are, 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 are caught. There's what we teach, and there's what this children can catch uh, by observation by seeing how you model your life. You are the best teacher. And that's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he grow up, he shall not depart from it. The word train there, it is the same word where, where, you know, when we talk about the train. The train has the head. And the, the train, the head of the train is the one that leads the, the entire, all the other carriages uh, uh, through the rail line. So if the head of the train or the, you know, uh, is headed the, in the wrong direction, the other the carriages will also be derailed. So we are the head. So training is more about observation, how they observe us behave. So we cannot tell our children not to smoke or to drink, uh, and not uh, we 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 are doing it openly in our homes. And when I say openly here, it doesn't mean that doing it in pub in private or in hidden places will help. But I'm saying what you model, you cannot uh, uh, you know you cannot punish what you you yourself uh, is doing. Because remember, it's all about training. 
So what your, your lifestyle is what you train your child to be. And number four, five is that have mentors who are older than you. So we need to tell our children the importance of mentorship uh, and, and how they, you know, obviously they can select their mentors, but also we can also help them select depending on their age group. Uh, their age, we need to teach them the importance of having mentors. And this will go a long way because what you are building in the life of your child, it tells me that maybe 95% of what you are teaching uh, or you're training your child will be also be used by your child when they become fathers and mothers. And then number six is value and education. I know maybe most of us, we tend, this one, we use it quite a lot, uh, uh, the value uh, uh, and education, but it should go beyond good grades. Uh, we have to look at uh, uh, the future, uh, looking at not only the good grades for now, which is important, but we need to begin to show them uh, how obvious, you know, what they are doing and the importance of what they are, they are doing and the, the why, why you're pushing them to be, uh, uh, you know, especially in the area of education, that they can be able to uh, look at this in future, uh, you know, showing them the, the, the end picture even as you push them for, for what you want to become now, but having that end goal. And then the other point, number seven, is have that adventure and play hard. What I mean by this is that sometimes we only, we never encourage our children to go and play, uh, have their fun, have adventures. Maybe we focus more on education and good behaviors, but also we should also encourage them to have adventures. When I talk about this, when I talk about adventures here, I'm not only talking about the go climbing trees. Uh, it talks about some of them are now, uh, uh, you know, some of you have, uh, are parents who have children who are over the age of 18, 19 there. We need to encourage them, obvious, uh, with good advice and also trusting them. Uh, it's good to encourage them to have that. We need to, uh, I'm trying to be quick because of time. Let me just check the time. Wow. We we almost there. Uh, we're finishing the next uh, eight minutes. So uh, the other thing is, uh, let them know that ninety percent of what you worry about would come to, come through. This is something that we sh should instill about our children about worry. And the other thing is that we need to teach them to embrace their passions. Maybe sometimes we we have already we know what we want our children to become. We, there's a pathway that we want them to follow. And sometimes we neglect the idea of their passions. Maybe some of the children that you, you know, I remember one day I was speaking to a young man and uh, he told me, yes, uh, I'm an engineer uh, by profession. I have a degree as an engineer. And, uh, but if, you are, if I, I'm honest with you, pastor, he told me, if I was the one to choose what I wanted to become, he told me I would have become a, 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 a top chef. He told me that I love cooking. Uh, and he told me that even right now, as much as I'm I'm doing this job, I I want to go to uh, 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 to a restaurant, uh, to to you know to the hotel industry, and I want to learn more uh, about uh, uh, cookery. Is somebody who was pushed because he was good in, you know, in maths, and uh, he ended up becoming an engineer. But he told me, "I don't love and I don't, I don't enjoy this job." Now that I, obviously, have graduated, uh, I want to go to, you know, to the to my passion. So, and I'm saying, because children, uh, you know, you can see multi-talented children in so many ways, but sometimes it's also always good to prayerfully ask God to direct, to give us the wisdom to direct our children to what they want to become. Most of you, maybe parents who are here, maybe you had so many passions when you were growing up. Obviously, the opportunity did not uh, permit you to become what you wanted. Uh, you know, there was no opportunity. But maybe what you're doing is not what you studied. And if you're doing what you love, then God for you. But not many people who end up doing what they wanted. But in this country, we know that even that would look menu, even something like being a chef, something like being, you know, other passions. I remember uh, last year, 
I was dealing with a young man who came to volunteer uh, in, in our church for a number of months. And he told me he loved forestry. I've never heard about somebody who is so passionate about forestry. So I asked him, what did you study? He told me, oh, obviously my parents wanted me to become a dentist. Uh, the, the, my mom wanted me to become a dentist. My father wanted me to become an artist because he's an artist. And then I found myself, you know, you know, in a sinkhole because I didn't know what to pursue. Then he asked him, what do you really want to become? He told me, uh, I would like to become, uh, to pursue something in forestry. I had to Google up and because some of these things we, you know, we don't know them. We, we you know, so I Googled up and I, you know, asked him, do you really want to go uh, to this? Then when I studied it, we saw the university that offers that, that, uh, that course is in some way in Swansea. They have a course. So I told, you know, we started talking with a young man. And finally, actually, the young man ended up, now he's in Swansea now, uh, as we are to, uh, as you're speaking, he's doing that degree in forestry. I have never heard about that degree. When we Googled it up, he told me now he's a, you know, he's in his first year. When you look at the prospect of that, uh, of that uh, career, uh, you know, of that career path is huge. I never knew it is that promising. I've never heard of it, but we, we Googled it up. I encourage him. Now he's doing that. The man came from there from Scotland. He was running away from the parents uh, uh, to come down here just to find a career in, in, in London. Then God that he came to our church and he was volunteering there uh, in the food bank. And then now he's doing that degree. So what am I saying? It's good to encourage our children to follow their passion. Some uh, And especially when, uh, you know, when you see that they are passionate about what they are doing, uh, you never know their future, uh, uh, you know, will be secure. So there are so many other points. I, I will not go into details. Uh, there's other points like uh, stay away from addictive substances. Uh, the other point is do not judge others. Uh, the other point that we need to teach these children. Uh, when I say this, do not judge others. We need to understand to teach them also by us behaving the same, that you're not judgmental, that in your meetings, uh, in, in your family meetings, you're always discussing about other people. You're always judging other people. They are picking something from you. So we have to be careful that we are not only teaching uh, uh, or, or, you know, or expecting this to come from our children while we are behaving the op uh, you know, uh, you know, opposite of what you're trying to teach them. So these are important keys that we need to teach our children. The other thing is that, uh, uh, is that we need to teach them to stand for, up for others. That means being our brother's keeper, helping those who are weak. These are things that are modeled in your home and we need to teach them. So all this point, I wish you can be able to screenshot them and make them uh, be intentional that these things you are teaching them because what you teach, uh, uh, you know, especially uh, and being intentional, it will never depart from the life of your children. The other po point is uh, stand up for others. We have said that kindness. Uh, point number 15. It's good them to know that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. So this is something that we should teach them. And is this about how you behave in times of adversity, when people maybe have spoken, uh, when things did not go the way you, you expected them to go. Uh, we must train them how to handle adversity and negative report, or maybe, you know, think that, you know, maybe a loss it's us to teach them it have to be modeled from home and you never know by the time they, they they leave home or by the time they are living by themselves they'll be able to know oh this is what my mom told me that life is 10 percent of what happened uh, uh, to me and 90 percent is all about how i respond some such statements some of them you can even use and stick them on your on your on your fridge uh and it will go a long way. Um, there's make wise decision, maintain an attitude of gratitude. And this point number seventeen, we are going to discuss it at the end of this slide. Uh, at the end of these slides, I'll show you maybe some of the things. Another thing is uh, manage your money wisely. I know maybe we can say this, but without training, it will not hold any water. For example, next week we have a, a, a financial literacy uh, a training. 
we have a team from Bakrish Bank who will be training our children. Uh, I believe the friar will be out by tomorrow. And I would encourage maybe some of the things that maybe we would like to teach our children, maybe we are not maybe competent enough in that area, but there are people who are uh, who are in that industry who can teach our children about financial literacy. So, and I would like to encourage all the parents, encourage your children to join. These things, we, we, they are given freely. Uh, financial literacy, we do them almost every year. We have two or three sessions whereby children are taught about financial literacy, different age groups. Uh, some of the things maybe you cannot be able, you may not be able to do it uh, from a pro for, uh, professional, uh, uh, you know, approach. But we always have people, and all these sessions are done for free. And uh, sometimes it's discouraging to see we have such professional who have you know good professionals, people who are, have given themselves to teach our children, and this uh, the, the number of children who are attending they are very very few. So remember what I said. It is what you commit to do, the intentionality of what you do that will count. So we have to sacrifice. Uh, this week, I, I was invited by a family to go and watch their sons pray. Uh, 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 they play football uh, at the highest level. And, uh, you know, the, the parents had to travel all the way from the other side of the, the country because their sons were playing football against uh, uh, Chelsea. And uh, I went to watch, and the children gave the good account of themselves. If you look at the, the team they were playing, for, uh, you know, the, the, their team, they were the only few maybe uh, blacks in that team. Do you want to tell me where they come from? There are no black uh, good players? I believe there are. But what you can what can we say about those parents is that they had paid the price. And they told me, they were telling me how they started taking these children to play football at the age of uh, six, seven. And they have grown through the pyramid uh, of, from the grassroots to now being picked up by a professional club. And who knows, these kids are going to become maybe the next uh when Rooney is the next uh, Bukayo Sakas, but it did not just come because they are talented. There was a price that was paid in terms of commitment, in terms of availability. And what am I saying is that most of our children are gifted, but maybe you have not exposed them to different platforms, to their passion, and being committed to see them become. There's a lot of sacrifices that, are, that is made, but believe you me, everything that you, you know, we have a saying that uh, we use in our church that uh, play now, pay later. Or pay now and play later. So it, the choice is yours. So whatever you're doing for your children right now, the price you're paying right now, uh, you have time to play or to enjoy in future. But either way, you will pay the price. So we need to teach our children and also we need to teach them to be people who keep their word. And also number 21, we have to teach our children to be uh, contributors, not only takers. So, and uh, the other thing is that own your mistakes, but don't be afraid to make them. Forgive and ask for forgiveness. Let them know that a winner never quits and quitters never wins. And also, you have to remind them to take care of their body, their mind, and their soul. And 26, be a giver. Don't always expect to receive. Always be a giver. So, as we come to the conclusion, there's something maybe that I've observed, especially within our, our Black community, is the area of gratitude. And I, I want to challenge all of us that we, our children, in most schools where they go to, they are the minority. And sometimes they, they, there's, you know, the tag of minority uh, is not only maybe in gender, but also sometimes uh, for those of you maybe who are here, uh, most of your children, maybe you are, you're a black person. And sometimes the challenge of being a black kid in a white community, the, the, you know, the challenge is, is huge. And maybe sometimes we never understand this challenge because maybe where you went to school, all of you spoke the same language, you 
the same color, if there was a different color, maybe one, and they were the minority, uh, unfortunately, you are the majority, so you never knew the pain. The expectation of our children is so huge. And we need to understand uh, how to train them and how also as parents to be involved in their life. And there's some few things that maybe I've observed within our community of the area of gratitude. It's not something that we that maybe, I don't know whether we were not taught or we don't know how to go about it, but there's something that maybe I want all of us to embrace. For example, maybe your children, uh, they have, they're into football or they're into uh, uh, dancing or music or they are going to different, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, extracurricular activities. Maybe even the teachers where they go to school. I want to challenge us. How often do you give them like over Christmas uh, periods? When how long? How often do you give them uh, a, a Christmas, uh, you know, a Christmas card or a thank you card? When your your child is finishing one level, to going to from one year to the other, do you appreciate the teachers who was with them, or you always highlight the problems? Because if we don't do these things, uh, 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 my, my brothers and sisters, we number one, we the how the picture that most people uh, have painted concerning us will always remain the same. But one thing that I always do, I say, as long as I know God brought for to me in this country for a reason, so I make sure that I am painting up different pictures, a, a different picture to the community that we live in that there is what they maybe the stereotype they have about black people or men or, or people from a certain uh, uh, origin or uh, a certain nation, uh, you know, are like this. I, I try to break that myth and that stereotype by doing the opposite. For, and this is starting from school. Sometimes, you know, over the Christmas, you are, is a good opportunity to give cards to your neighbors. Maybe your neighbors are uh, people of, of different colors from you. It is the time that you give a Christmas card. Let them know that, number one, you are there, you acknowledge them. And sometimes even a box of chocolate can go a long way. And this can go even to the life of your teacher, uh, to, the, to the school where children go to school. Uh, maybe a football coach or a, a dancing teacher, uh, you know, have you ever given a thank you card? Have you even, even written an email? Because the, when you do these things, you're also teaching your children that it's good to be grateful. And I've written some few things here, uh, uh, you know, ideas for a thank you note. Uh, you know, this is off the course uh, of what you're learning tonight, but I just felt I, I, I put this for all of us as parents. I've tried to put some, get some few ideas here. For example, maybe if your child is, is has a coach, you know, is playing football or a certain game. That you, these are some of the ideas, uh, and you can copy paste them, and you can use them in your email, or just an idea of how you can be able to write these notes. Uh, which one? Number one is you win some and you lose some. You've taught all of the kids that knowing you how to do both gracefully is important. Thank you for teaching our child. This is critical life lesson and sports at the same time. These are some ideas. You can develop this and obviously can write more of this, but these are just highlights. Uh, another example is I wanted to reach out to tell you how much you've made an impact on my child's life. Not only has their mood improved, but I can see genuineness in them to do better and be better. Thank you. It's a small notes, but goes a long way. Number three, great leaders create great leaders. Thank you for being one for my child. You have shown them how to act appropriately and how to be courageous in the face of fear and all adversity. Thank you. And the last one, uh, maybe through your shining example and brave, courageous leadership, you have coached my child to achieve more above beyond their goals. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for fostering and unleashing their potential. All these things, you may think that maybe the teachers are professionals. Yes, they, they are supposed to do their job. But believe you me, you're also professional in a, in a way. And you can imagine if you receive a thank you card. Even to your Sunday school teachers, your children's Sunday school teachers, their youth leaders, have this habit. It goes a long way. And whatever you give, 
shall come back to you. The other ideas, uh, uh, you know, uh, the last one here, uh, number seven, you have taught our child to, how to win, to lose, and to come back when the chips are down. Thank you for teaching these valuable lessons that only sports can perfect. So, uh, uh, you know, I was looking at, especially from a, uh, uh, when you're writing to the, the te their teachers and their coaches, this will go a long way. So, yes, we've come to the end. I know how I can speak for Great Britain. I've spoken a lot, but I like to maximize this opportunity so that you can be able to dispense whatever I feel can help us as parents to raise up our children in the best way. And if you feel challenged, maybe you may say, Pastor, maybe you, you sometimes you are very hard on us. Yes, I, I'm also putting myself in this. Maybe I, I never used to do this in the beginning, but I've seen the effect of, especially now, affirming our son, our children, uh, writing these thank you notes to, to their teachers, uh, giving cards in my neighborhood. It has opened so many, many doors. I give you good, uh, another example uh, uh, what happened some uh, last year. One of our neighbors was uh, bedridden for some time. And I remember there was a time that she felt like she's going to die. And I remember I, I used to knock, knock on her door and just go and encourage her. Um, I remember uh, it's not somebody who went to church. So, but I, I, they call me Reverend. They know me. Actually, they call me Vicar. They, so they knew me as a person who who is of, who go to church and who prays for others. So I ask her, can I pray for you? And to cut the long story short, we prayed together and uh, she had a hip operation. And then um, she was feeling that she, she was saying that I feel like I'm going to die. And you know, I've started obviously preparing myself to go. But to cut the long story short, she's well now. And uh, one day she told me, uh, but this is to the glory of God. She told me, I've lived in this neighborhood since I was young. But she, this is her word. She told me, you are the best thing that happened, that God brought you here. He used the, those words because we have never seen somebody like you. I, obvious. Uh, uh, you may you may not think you know you may try to think how I felt, and for uh for an English lady to say those words, and uh, it went a long way. But how did this journey begin? It did not begin last year. It began with a card, Christmas card that opened the door. Before our first years in this neighborhood, we have lived in this neighborhood for almost seventeen years now. Before we never used to receive cards, but when I started giving cards every Christmas. I have about 35 cards that are uh, brought, I uh, you know, that are posted through my letterbox every Christmas. Before, we used to have few, only maybe from friends and from the church. But nowadays, it has become a habit in this neighborhood, in my immediate neighborhood here. People give cards and we get cards from all the houses, unless maybe somebody is new uh, who doesn't know the, 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 the routine. But I know it has become a routine. Something that I, maybe we started humbly, and this door it has opened doors uh, in so many other ways. So what am I saying? Let's teach our children to be grateful, uh, you know, and also let's also embrace others. Teach them to do that. Teach them also to appreciate their teachers, and also help them uh, in in you know in the area of your passion i'm just trying to gather some of the ideas uh we have uh we have learned tonight so that's the end and unless there's a question we are going to end there i know i've taken so much time tonight but is there any question before we wind up we've come to the end for those who have not slept any question or any comment Hello. Hi, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I thank God for your life. Thank you for the teaching. Thank I have you. really learned a lot. And thank you. those ideas for our thank you notes. Really, I do appreciate and may God bless you. 
You're very welcome. And I congratulations, you are the first uh, parent to join. You joined five, uh, almost seven minutes to eight. So <laughs> thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Any other word, any other question or challenge? You, you know, it's not always a, a question you can challenge. Or you want to challenge, uh, you can challenge me outside the platform. <laughs> any question or any, before we wind up? Right. So, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we're going to end our session. And uh, if there's no other question, we let's uh, wind up uh, uh, with the order of prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you for the compliment also on the, on the chat. God, it's a bless you. I really appreciate all of you. Right. So, uh, can I request maybe you, maybe somebody... I think we have done all. So I hope you you also have time to take the, the screenshot when necessary. So let's, can we share the grace together now? And I'll be the grace of our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. 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 And the love of God. God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. 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 Amen. Be us now. And Amen. 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 Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives in the house of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. So, God, to bless you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I know you have to bear with me for, you know, today I exceeded the time. Uh, but anyway, tomorrow is uh, Good Friday. So, God bless you. And thank you. Have a wonderful thank night. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to share the, you, the recordings afterwards. So, for those of you maybe who slept when I was <laughs> teaching, you'll have time to you'll have time to go through a fresh. So, good night. Go. Good night. God bless you. Good night, you. Good night everyone. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank 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 you. Good to see you, Mr. Peter Special. God bless you. Oh, oh, thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you very much for a great talk. It was really good. I missed it for the first beginning, but then I know I'll get the recording. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, thank you. I've just seen that you joined. God bless you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, how do I get the, the recording? Is it from the, uh, Facebook or from... Uh... Okay, what I will do, uh, I'm just finalizing it now. Okay. Then I 